Hello there, this is Alana Tucky. In this video, we're going to be going over section 3.2, which is measures of variation and dispersion. So we start off with the most basic measure of variation, which is the range. Now, before we get into that, let's talk about the word dispersion for a second, because that's a fancy schmancy word. It sounds like the kind of thing you'd um, get a high SAT score for knowing. So dispersion is a fancy word for spread, right, or spread out. So it's how spread out your data is. Right? So the more disperse, the more spread out the data points are. Simple as that. So we want to come up with a couple measures of that dispersion. Now the first measure is the range. The range, capital R is the symbol for it, is the difference between the largest, that's right, it's a typo, the largest and smallest data values. And there's the formula. Capital R range is largest minus smallest, or another way to say it is max minus min, right? Your maximum minus your minimum. All right, now keep in mind, some authors, some books write it out in words. So they'll say, okay, our range is from 2 to 10, or 2 to 19, for example, while others give it as a number. So you take 19, which is your max, minus your min of 2, and you subtract them, and you'll have the difference, which is 17. And our textbook error uses the latter one, not the former. So they're both um, a way to think about range, but for our course, for our purposes, we're going to use the subtraction one. And actually, I'm going to write out max minus min. One second. There. That's the formula. So maximum is your largest value, minimum is your smallest value. You subtract them and you'll have your range. Now the calculator doesn't really find the range per se, but it does find the maximum and minimum. So you can find the max and min with your calculator and then just use the formula. So let me grab a calculator. I've already done the algebra exams. The algebra exam values I'm going to highlight in I don't know, blue here. Let me fix that one second. There, I changed it to green because the blue just looked too obnoxious. So the algebra exam is right here. So that's the green values. And I've already found the mean, which was 74, and the range, which was 40. So now I want to do the same for the statistics exam, which is the orange values right there. So I'm giving you two different course exams, but in one data set. So the top row is one data set, the bottom row is the other data set. So it's really two data sets written at once. All right, so now I need to go grab the calculator. So let me pull up that program. All right, here's my TI-84 calculator. I'm going to change the screen so you guys can have a um, big picture of the screen. One second. All right, there it is. So let me just quit to get out of this mode menu that I'm in. There we have it. Okay, so I want to press stat. I'm going to press number one, edit. Now I have some old data in there that I do not want. So I'm going to go up to L2 and press clear, enter. And then I'm going to go to the left, go up to L1 and press clear, enter. And now I'm going to type my data. So 60, enter, 100, enter, 61, enter, and so on. Um, one thing to notice about these calculators, especially the new one, if you type fast, which I do, it sometimes doesn't register both numbers. So you have to actually type a little bit slower to get it to recognize both of the numbers there. So there they are, all 10 of them. So now we press stat, go to the right to calculate, pick number one, one variable stats, and all of our data is in L1, right? So in the single column. So I'm going to leave list as L1, frequency list as blank, and I go down to calculate and press enter. And there at the top I can see that the mean is 74. And if I scroll down with the down arrow I can see the max is 100 and the min is 60. So when I subtract the two I'm going to get 40. So let me type those answers in. And there they are. So it's kind of interesting to note that the algebra exam had the same mean and the same range as the stats exam. It's sort of like I planned it that way. Hmm. See how I made them both 60 and 100 to start? So I'm setting up the range to be the same. And then I fiddled around with the numbers for a long time until I got it so that the means for the two groups are the same. Because I'm trying to get at a point. But first, before we get to that point, let's talk about whether these are statistics or parameters. And the answer would be they're statistics because it says right up here that these are a sample of scores. These are not the entire population unto themselves. So because the data are from a sample. Done. 
All right, next, label the mean and range on the for the exams on the dot plot below. So on the dot plot, something you learn about in chapter two. So that top line, that's the algebra exam scores, and the bottom line is the statistics exam scores. So there they are. And we want to label the mean and the range, but luckily for us, they have the same mean and range. So we can make this work as long as we grab it for both of them. So let me type those in one second. And there we have them labeled. So the mean's right here at this spot, which is 74, kind of that hash mark right there. And then the range is the distance from 60 to 100, which was 40. All right, now, what was I getting at when I did this? Because I obviously created these for a reason. So the first thing I want us to see is if the means of two data sets are the same, does that mean that the data sets are similar? So if you look at the algebra exam and the stats exam, they have the same mean of 74, but look at the algebra exam and the stats exam dots. They're not the same at all. We know that they have the same balance point of 74, but that's all we know. So let me type that up. All right, so there we have it. So the means are the same means that the data sets have the same balance point. Let me put that right. Data sets have the same balance points, or have balance points in the same air place. But the data sets themselves are not necessarily the same at all, right? The, in, um, the interior points, the rest of the points, can be very different, right? And then same thing with the ranges. If you know that the range is the same, that means the distance from the min to the max is the same but the rest of the data are not necessarily the same at all, right? They can be very different. Same here. Yeah. And that means that the important, the important moral of the story is that the range is not a very good measure of spread. So let me put that at important note. The range is not a very, um, I don't want to say good, because that implies um, it's not a very, um, well, how to say good, measure of spread. It's easy to calculate, but it has a lot of problems. Easy to calculate, but doesn't tell us that much about the data, other than the distance from min to max. That means that we need a better data point or a better measure and that's going to be coming to us in another page, which is the standard deviation. So, and the variance. So we're going to learn how to find those, but those will be in the next video. So we've learned how to find range, and we've learned that it's not a very good measure of spread. So now we've got to find something better. I'm just going to highlight that real quick for us. All right, I'll see you back in the next video.